Hey guys, Max here to uh, bring you the GPP knowledge for the day. Uh, so I hope you all had a great weekend and let's jump right into it. Uh, this is the May 2nd slate. So we have some uh, really chalky pitching options today, I think. Uh, the first one I'm going to go over is uh, Mr. Cueto. Uh, I think the box score watchers are going to love him. His last game, he went pretty crazy, uh, struck out a bunch of guys, had a complete game uh, shut out. But, and I think, uh, I mean, he's generally a safe option today. He's facing his old team. His uh, walk rate is extremely low at 3%. His strikeout rate is uh, up this year. And uh, the Reds have been struggling mightily on offense all year. Um, the things that aren't going in his favor, however, are the fact that he's pitching at his old home ballpark and a great American home run park where it's pretty easy to bomb it out anytime you want. And um, teams can string together some pretty big innings. I think if he's like 40% owned today and I'm going to try to gauge his ownership during the day, I'm going to fade him in GPPs and just leave him for cash games. I think we can get the same upside elsewhere at lower ownership. And I generally try to avoid the guys that are going to be extremely popular due to the fact that, you know, he can definitely blow up today and you can bypass a giant number of, of teams and GPPs by uh, fading him. Um, uh, the second guy I want to talk about is Keiko in uh, Houston. Uh, here, I don't think his ownership will be that high as he has generally disappointed uh, this year. He's only had one home start and he was stellar in that start and he's been not blown up, but he has not pitched well and definitely has not made up uh, the fantasy points we won for his salary um, this year so far. So today he's back at home. He's facing Minnesota that is generally viewed as being pretty good against left-handed pitching. They have a lot of right-handed power bats and Dozier and Sano. But this year so far, they're 28th in Woba against left-handed pitching. I think this is a pretty good option to go if he is not going to be popular. If he's somewhere in like 10% ownership range, I think I'm going to have a lot of him due to his uh, upside at home. And even though he has not been great so far this year, and his velocity's down a little bit, his walk rate's up, I think those stats can normalize. I mean, it's only been one month, and uh, we definitely have a whole lot of games uh, to go this year. Uh, another guy I want to talk about is Volquez. I don't think he'll be that highly owned either due to the fact that he's facing the Nationals. But the Nationals have been uh, striking out a lot against righties this year. He's pitching at home in a great ballpark for pitchers. And uh, I think he could be a good sneaky option at his price. Kind of a pivot from, uh, from Cologne for only 600 more. Cologne being super popular. We can jump right to Cologne and talk about him. I think he's a good cash option today. He's facing a Braves team that has only hit two home runs this year. But uh, I think he will be very, very highly owned being cheap and pitching at home against the woeful Braves team. So I think in GPPs, due to the fact that he's never going to have 30, 35 point upside, we can avoid him and look elsewhere to a guy like Volquez, who's similar in price, but I think carries higher upside at a lower ownership. Um, a couple more guys to talk about here. Uh, Nathan Carnes is pitching at Oakland today. Uh, he's been really good to start the year. He's got like a 92, 93 mile an hour fastball. Uh, good changeup. I think he can be sneaky today against Oakland. Generally, I don't like to pick on Oakland as they make a lot of contact. But this last week, they've been striking out a good deal against righty. So I think this might be a good spot to go in Oakland where uh, the ballpark's huge and you're really not going to get blown up that often. Uh, two other guys who are kind of like my GPP specials, they carry a lot of risk but also carry upside, in my opinion, are Gray and Berrios. Both have high K, uh, high K numbers this year, but, I mean, Gray is pitched only two games, and both games have been at, uh, at uh, Coors Field, where uh, he has been hit very, very hard. Today, he's going against the Padres, who strike out a ton, cannot hit righties, 
and he's going against them in uh, a very the very friendly confines of Petco. So I think uh, he could be a sneaky option today that most people will not look at. Uh, second guy is Berrios, who had one start this, so far this year. He was really wild in his debut uh, last week. Uh, today he's going against uh, the Astros, who I kind of like to pick on with right, with high K righties. Uh, the ballpark is not great, and Astros can always go off for a bunch of home runs, but they can also strike out a ton. So it's kind of like your risky GPP plays, uh, maybe for low-dollar tournaments where you uh, kind of have to hit it spot on to uh, make any of the money. Uh, so on to the stacks today. I think that's all for pitching. Uh, let's start off with what I think was going to be the chalkiest stack of the day, and that is the Mets. Uh, they're facing Fultinovich, who is pretty woeful against uh, both uh, lefties and righties. He's got a 401 Woba against lefties last year and a 364 against righties. Uh, you can stack up the whole Mets team. I mean, basically pick anybody. I know they're going to be very popular, but I don't think you should fade them because I think they carry extreme upside. Uh, just get a bit creative when you're stacking the Mets. You know, don't go one through five, maybe skip some people, maybe uh, go one through five, but then your other three hitters should be very, uh, uh, well, what's the word I'm looking for, very, uh, very uh, not popular. So basically just uh, take the Mets, but take them with, with some pitchers that are going to be sneaky or some hitters that are going to be sneaky. Uh, some other stacks for you, I like the Brewers today. I've stacked them every day until yesterday, and of course yesterday they will would have won you all the money. But um, I think I'm going to jump right back on today. I really like them at home against uh, Weaver, who is a crafty righty. And you know, usually we talk about crafty lefties who throw who don't throw hard, but uh, Weaver's fastball tops out at like 84 miles an hour, so he's definitely a definition of a crafty righty. And I think uh, he can be had today by the Brewers in, uh, in their home park, in Miller Park. So I think we, uh, we can go with guys like Nguyen Heis. I don't think he will be popular, but he's hitting in the middle of that order. He's got the fifth spot locked up uh, when they're facing righties. And I think uh, he can be very good today. He can also, I mean, we're talking about stacks here. So yeah, obviously you can go one through five, two through six, whatever. Um, another team I like today are the Blue Jays. I hope they're off of uh, people are off of them. They're facing AJ Griffin, who's been good so far this year. Has like a three and record and a one point something ERA, but his uh, xFIP is in the high fours. So I think that was going to normalize eventually. And why not start today? Uh, the Vegas also loves the Blue Jays today. They're projected for four point nine runs which I think will be the highest on the slate. So I really don't think they're going to be sneaky, but I think you can pick and choose here and get some really good upside. A couple more teams for you. I like Seattle as a sneaky stack against Kendall Graveman in Oakland. I like I love their lefties today. Uh, Cano, Seager, uh, Smith, all those guys have home run upside, and I think they can put a big, uh, big number up on uh, Graveman today, which also makes me like Carnes especially on FanDuel, where I think he's going to get the win. Uh, my last but not least, I want to talk about, actually not last, but the second to last, is uh, San Fran. Uh, they're also uh, at Great American B uh, Ballpark. They make lots of contact, and they're going against the lefty today who throws hard, has good K numbers, but uh, I think they're the, he can also be hit hard. If anything that gets hit hard here goes out for uh, home runs. So I, uh, I think they carry upside for sure. And for the last stack, finally, uh, I like the Cardinals today. Um, I know that Hellickson has had good numbers so far, and people have had really uh, good luck uh, putting him in their lineups, but I think today he should probably come off the, airs, the rails a little bit. Uh, oh, so far over his career, he's had uh, ERAs and XFIPs in the mid-fours, so... So far this year, he's way way below that. So to me, people should start coming back to earth a little bit as we get the sample size higher. Um, I think that starts today. I love uh, guys like Carpenter, 
Um, Hazel Baker, if he makes it into the lineup. Uh, I think uh, the Cardinals are going to be a low-owned, high-upside stack. So that's all for me today, guys. Uh, again, we have a great GPP slate. The chalky options that are going to be out there, I think, are going to be very chalky. And the rest are going to be uh, low-owned, which is what we love in GPPs. So go out there, make some money, come chat with us in the Slurve chat room. We're going to be there all day giving out great advice. So uh, come uh, share in that knowledge. See you all tomorrow. Peace.